An Ironman is different to an Olympic distance triathlon for the obvious reason of the distance, but how do the athletes actually differ? In this video, we're going to be looking at a comparison between a top level ITU athlete and a top level Ironman athlete. Admittedly, I have done things a little bit backwards because last year I did my first Ironman race and this year I've done my first sprint distance race. And right now I'm here in Glasgow at the European Sprint Distance Triathlon Championships and it has got me thinking, how does ITU racing differ from Ironman racing? Well, we're going to be breaking it down and comparing the attributes needed discipline by discipline. Let's start with a swim and what ITU athletes need to be prepared for. Obviously it is shorter so it's going to be faster and there is a serious emphasis for speed especially at the start of the race because staying in a pack is so important especially when it comes onto the bike but we'll come onto that in a moment. And also you are more likely to see an Australian style exit in ITU racing. That's when the swimmers have to come back out onto the land or onto the pontoon and dive back in again. So it just really requires that mindset of staying focused and being able to adapt to the situation. I'm on the other hand is much longer but it's not just there that the differences end. There's no team aspect to Ironman so you're not going to have a domestic role that might be helping you in the swim. You've got to pace it in this individual effort and having said that though the swim percentage is much smaller so it makes less of an impact on the race and there's more time to catch up on the bike and the run so you'll find some of the swimmers that don't come from ITU racing might be weaker in this discipline. Moving into transition and nailing T1 as an ITU athlete is essential. All they have time to do is grab helmets and their bike and then pretty much everybody will be doing a flying mat. There's no time for stopping getting onto your bike because the pack will have gone. Whereas long distance triathlon on the other hand is a bit more methodical. Sometimes athletes will be having to put a race belt on for the bike and you'll even see some putting on aero socks over their shoes because in the grand scheme of things it's 112 mile or 180k of biking so a few seconds in T1 don't make such a difference. Earlier I mentioned the importance of being in a pack when it comes to the swim and that is because of the bike. So in pro racing it's draft legal which means athletes can get benefit from being behind the others and in a group so aero becomes less important. And you'll see some teams even enter a domestic role and their job is to basically help their teammate to cycle faster for less effort and we'll see surges and potential breakaways so these athletes have got to be able to react to that and change their pace and their tempo as a result. But sometimes we can see more crash is just naturally coming from group cycling but on the flip side if the strong runner is controlling the cycle group you can actually see the cycle quite slow and then it ends up being a running race. It's actually on the bike that we see the biggest difference in the races and the types of athletes when it comes to the comparison of ITU and Ironman partly because the bike is so much longer but also it is non-drafting so the bike becomes more of a focus. You'll see athletes spending a lot of time working on their aerodynamics and ultimately it's an individual effort so they'll be riding to what which requires a lot of discipline but it it means that you're reacting less to the athletes around you and it's very much about the athletes staying to their own numbers and with this nutrition becomes vitally important as well and you'll see athletes even stopping to use their own special needs on course and of course it is pacing because you've got a marathon yet to come. Back into transition and T2 isn't quite as vital as T1 for the Olympic distance athletes but still no hanging around it's literally rack bike helmet off shoes on and out onto the run whereas Ironman athletes have a bit more time to regroup after that long bike ride so they'll change their socks quite often you'll see some athletes even putting shorts on so trying to grab any nutrition put a visor on basically make sure you're comfortable because there is still a marathon to go. Onto the run and for sprint or Olympic distance it's less than 20 or 40 minutes of racing to go and it's tactical. There's going to be team coaches out on the course telling athletes the time gap to the ones in front or the chasing group and there's going to be crowds lining the course so plenty of atmosphere for the athletes to feed off and these athletes really need to have the ability to change pace because so often we see a sprint finish. <laughs> Whereas the long distance racing is about being patient, sticking to your game plan, staying on top of your nutrition and importantly not getting carried away if you feel good early on because there's going to be moments when there's nobody else around, it's lonely on the marathon and this is where endurance of mind and body really will start to show. You might think you're not having a good day and things can suddenly change in an Ironman. It's a marathon at the end of the day and it's not over till you get to that finish line. 
Well, that's my thought, but I thought it's probably time that I actually spoke to a professional. So Fraser Cartman has kindly agreed to join me. Now, Fraser, you obviously started with ITU and now you race Ironman. What was your favourite part of ITU racing? I came from a swim background, so I guess by default that was favourite to begin with. Yeah. I was always happy riding a bike, rode a bike quite well when I raced short course. So yeah, swim bike was definitely my um, uh, background and favoured yeah. two legs. Um, running was just something that I always kind of got through. And when you changed to Ironman, what was it you enjoyed? Did you like going longer and less intensity or what, what part of Ironman did you prefer compared to ITU racing? Yeah, I mean, it certainly suited my strength at the time to be on a bike for a longer length of time. I was quite strong relatively at the time and in an ITU race, the bike leg could be said to not be as important. I mean, it certainly is important because you yeah. don't want to be slow and weak when you get off for, for running fast, but no, that helped me because I could ride quite strong. Um, yeah. As I said, had swum quite well as a kid, so that meant that the swim seemed quite easy relatively compared to a short course. And coming from ITU to Ironman, for you personally, what did you have to change? Other than the obvious, your training's longer, what did you actually have to change in your sort of emphasis on your training? Um, so you drop the number of swims you do in a week. So let's say you'd swim daily, six, seven times a week when you're doing ITU stuff. That doesn't need to be done anymore for Ironman. It certainly helps to have a really good swim and it sets you up well, but nothing like it does in seven, um, sorry, um, Olympic where it's crucial. Yeah. So yeah, you drop the number of swims down per week and sure, just focus more aerobic bike riding versus the short, sharp, intense stuff that you really need to do for for the um, Olympic distance. Cool. It is a natural progression for athletes to move from ITU to Ironman, just like Fraser did. And I think we're gonna see more of it, as it basically means triathletes can prolong their career in the sport. But at the end of the day, what is the biggest achievement? Is it being crowned Olympic world champion in triathlon, or is it becoming the king or queen of Kona in the Ironman World Championships? I really don't know, and I want to know what you think. So do let me know in the comments section below which you think is the biggest achievement. And if you've enjoyed this, and you don't want to miss any more videos from GTN, make sure you hit the globe to subscribe. And if you want to learn how to do a flying mount so you can hone that transition in, there's a video on that just here.